Shalom, shalom, precious saints. This is your host, Sister Dalila dos Santos, here to deliver the word of our Lord Jesus without compromise. I invite you all to hide under the shadow of the Most High God and seek refuge. Shalom, shalom, precious saints. I hope you are all doing well by the grace of God. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's another day, saints. Max Sunny A, welcome and shalom. Shalom, beloved sister Lauren Obus Gray. Shalom, sister Roxy. Shalom, sister Vanille Mili. Shalom, Judy. Shalom, vibrant thing. Shalom, shalom, Ron Clanson. Shalom, sister Gabriel. Shalom, sister Jacqueline. Shalom, shalom, Odongo 56. Shalom, Sister Gabriel Middleton. Shalom, precious sister. Shalom, 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 Sonel Kelly. Shalom, precious saints. As you join in, God bless you. Shalom, shalom, Sister Abimbola Akano. Shalom, shalom, precious saints. Shalom, Dennis. Shalom, Mrs. Karingomi. Shalom, Brother Sonel Kelly. Shalom, Myrna Rita. Shalom, Shalom, Saints. Shalom, St. Shalom. So, precious Saints, as you are joining in, please endeavor to keep liking the live stream. And if you are already doing so, um, I really thank you for it. Shalom, Daddy Leo, and welcome. Shalom, Sister Alice Jones, and welcome. Sister Titi Ture, Shalom. Shalom, Sister China. Shalom, Sister Rhonda, Sister Melissa. Shalom, Saints. Sister Kita, Brother Brian Devereaux, Shalom. So, precious Saints, I want to glorify the name of the living God because yesterday my, you know, the, the borough that I live in was uh, targeted for the riots but by the grace of god um, the community here got together and they all went out in a form of protest in other words they were willing to defend their homes by all means necessary so because of the amount of people that came out with broomsticks and everything that they could grab hold of, they back off and they didn't um, destroy anything. Thank God, no riots. But my town, um, I live close, very close to Walthamstow, or better say East London. We had no 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 attacks at all so thank you saints for keeping me and my family in prayers um last night was not was you know we were all anxious because of what i didn't know that we were to be a target because apparently there is a list of the places that they seek to cause these riots and my town was next so it was supposed to to be yesterday but it didn't happen so thank god for deliverance thank god for safety some of you sent me um, messages ask me how am i doing i have not responded because i didn't sleep much last night when i heard about all these things that you know were supposed to happen but thank god for his divine protection and I, I don't know if if there is anyone else here that is in London, but please stay home for now. All right. I know the weather is lovely and there is that temptation for you to want to go out and enjoy the day. Don't do it. OK, just because they didn't come yesterday, it doesn't mean that they will not come today. And yesterday there were loads of arrests just around my neighborhood the police was busy arresting a lot of people so stay home if you can do your grocery shopping online by all means do it but it's not worth it going outside because just because they failed yesterday 
it does not mean that they're not going to try again. So please, just stay home. All right. Precious saints, I don't want to bore you with my issues. I just want to glorify the name of the living God for preserving me and my family. And not only me and my family, the loads of Londoners yesterday that were in fear for their lives. But thank God for his protection. So precious saints, do get your Bibles ready, pen and paper to take down some notes as you all, I know already you are prepared. And the title for this live stream is Pleading the Blood of Jesus. Pleading the Blood of Jesus. Um, pleading the Blood of Jesus. Pleading the Blood of Jesus. I have a very great testimony that a sister sent to me. But I cannot read the testimony without first giving a, you know, a warning out to all of you saints. I will read the testimony tomorrow. But make sure that no children are present as I'm reading this testimony, okay? Because it's very graphic, all right? But it's a very powerful testimony. So I'm not going to be responsible and read the testimony today. I have to prepare you in advance because I know this is the holiday period. And some of you have your children as you are watching the live stream. But if you are interested tomorrow to hear this powerful testimony that a sister sent, please, 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 tomorrow I will do it, okay? I'm asking you to, you know, be patient with me, um, and tomorrow I will do it. All right, saints, and I hope you will keep the children away from, <laughs> from the live stream, because I don't want the children to hear them. The testimony, all right? It's only for adults. So tomorrow be ready. I will read it. And sister, you know already that you sent me that testimony. I have not yet responded, but trust me, I will respond it. Okay? Thank God, saints. So once again, let me remind you. Thank you, sister Lori, for pinning the title for us. Pleading the blood of Jesus is the title for this live stream. It is important, saints, at such a time as this, that you understand the power that is in the blood of Jesus and how to plead the blood of Jesus. All right? It is extremely important, especially in times like this where we are seeing, you know, so many biblical prophecies unfolding. Nevertheless, saints, let us consecrate this live stream unto the Lord and invite his presence here in our midst. All right, saints, hallelujah. Abba, Father, King of glory, everlasting God, we honor you today, Lord God. We bless your name and we worship you, Abba, Father. Father, Lord, without you, Father, Lord, our sense of existence has no meaning. Father, Lord, without you, we are nothing, Lord God. You are everything to us. And Father, Lord, we honor you as our King of glory. We worship you. Father, Lord, we bow down to you. Lord God, we prostrate before your holy presence. Because, Father, Lord, you are our rock, our foundation. You are everything that we have. There are rich people that are trusting in their vast amounts of wealth trusting in their prestige, their power, their integrity. But who are we, Lord God? Mere mortals, that you should consider us. Yet, you have given the very best that you had, your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to die for us on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. So, Father Lord, we thank you once again for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Father Lord, for your mercies that are new every day, Lord God. And Father Lord, I thank you for protect, for your protection um, over our lives, Lord God. Father Lord, you protect us in ways that sometimes we are so ungrateful and we don't see the power of your hand shielding us from evil, Lord God. But today, we want to say thank you, Father, for watching over us, Father. Thank you for keeping us in good health, Father. We thank you 
for providing a roof over our heads, providing food, providing means of transportation, for protecting us, Father Lord, day in and day out. Lord, we thank you and we honor you and we bless your holy and precious name. Father Lord, yesterday, I didn't even know that they were targeting my neighborhood, Father Lord, and the vicinities, Lord God, for riots. But God, your precious, righteous hand kept these evil people away, Lord God. And Father Lord, I thank you for your divine protection. I thank you for not allowing any evil, Father Lord, um, to happen to us, Lord God. And Father Lord, my neighbors as well, I thank God for their lives, Lord God. And the, and the community at large, Lord God. Thank you for protecting all of us, Lord God. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are asking you today to please forgive us our sins, our transgressions, and all our iniquities, Father, Lord, back to a thousand generations before us. Father, Lord, cleanse our bloodlines with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Continuously sanctify and purify each one of us, family members, children, with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Father, Lord, we hereby consecrate this live stream into your holy and precious hands. We ask you to be in total control and authority over this live stream. Father, Lord, we ask you once more to find expression in our midst so that your will will prevail concerning our lives, Lord God. Father, Lord, begin to bind the principalities rulers of darkness, wicked and demonic spirits with the agenda to steal, kill, destroy, cause confusion, division in our midst. And Father Lord, cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever, never to have the power, the dominion, the control and the authority over the live stream, the affairs of the live stream and our very own lives, Lord God. Father Lord, I envelope each one of us here, Lord God, in the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. I saturate our environments, Father Lord, our homes, Lord God. I saturate, Father Lord, our, our offices, those at work, Lord God, those in their vehicles traveling, going home and going to work. I saturate our environments with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus, Lord God of Israel. Over all the affairs of the live stream, Father Lord, I speak the blood over each word that will proceed from my mouth. And I ask you, Father Lord, use me once again as a vessel, Lord God, to communicate to your children your word that will set them free, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, if there is any agent of darkness, darkness targeting us on this live stream for evil, Father Lord, I pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit will expose them. And Father Lord, as they are being exposed, render them powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. Put them to shame, Lord God. Father Lord, don't allow us to see corruption in the land of the living, Lord God. Father Lord, bring them to note, Lord God. Let the assignment be rendered, Father Lord, kneel and void, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father Lord, I'm asking you today. That you will bring many souls into repentance, into salvation today, Lord God. To put the enemy to shame, Lord God. And Father Lord, give us understanding of your word, Lord God, by filling us with your Holy Spirit. Because without your Holy Spirit, we will not be able to understand your word. And Father Lord, we won't be able to operate in your truth, Lord God. In, and, and in your divine, Father Lord, project for us, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, deliver us from the retaliations of the kingdom of darkness and Satan, Lord God. Protect us, deliver us, Lord God, as we gather here. Let your will, Father Lord, be fulfilled in each one of our lives, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, this live stream is holy ground. From the moderators to each one of the saints, including myself and our families, we are covered with the blood of Jesus. No evil can come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So saints, I want you to be patient with me today. I have quite few, a few scriptures, so don't be discouraged, all right? But you need to know these scriptures because... There is power in the blood of Jesus. 
Sometimes we believers, when we are facing difficulties, moments of testing and tribulation and attacks of the enemy, we forget that the blood of Jesus has all power to deliver us, to sanctify us, to purify us, to, 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 to do great things for us. All right, saints. Let us go first. Book of John, chapter 6, from verse 50. To 59. Book of John, chapter 6, from verse 50 to 59, and it reads But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give. For the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them. Very truly I tell you. Unless you eat the flesh of the son of man. And drink his blood. You have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Has eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Hallelujah. What a powerful scripture, saints. So Jesus is giving us here an analogy. But some Christians think that this is just a figurative speech that Jesus is using. That is, Jesus is not using literal words. It's, he doesn't mean, he didn't meant it in a literal sense of what he was saying about him being the bread that comes down from heaven and in the need of us eat of him. All right, to have life. Some people think that, oh, this is just a figurative, it's symbolic. But I'm telling you, it's, a, it's the greatest lie ever told to many believers. There is a spiritual life, right? And there is also a physical life, okay? So your physical body has need of what? Of physical food and physical water and things in this earth to sustain you, all right? Your body needs to be sustained, to be nourished, all right? You need water to be hydrated, okay? But you do have a spiritual body as well, all right? You do have a spiritual body that is that same body that will take you to the presence of God when you die to be judged. It's not this body that will catapult you to the presence of God for you to be judged the day that you die. It is your spiritual body that will leave your carnal body and go to God, right? So that spiritual body that you have, is that same, same spiritual body that you see when you are dreaming? That is your spiritual man. Do you know that when you are in a dream and you are in a, in a you, you could be in a certain location, another country, or you're doing things in the spirit, that is your spiritual body because your, your natural body cannot go to the physic, phys, to the spiritual. It can't. It can't travel that dimension. All right? So it's your spirit man that travels to the spirit when you go to sleep. That's like, that is why when you sleep, it's like a mini death, isn't it? You go to your bed, you cover yourself. You know, if you think it's like even like a coffin, the bed, right? And you go and you cover yourself up to here. Isn't that how bodies go in the coffin and they cover them and, and everything, right? And we say, oh, he has gone to sleep. Even the Bible says there has this term in the Old Testament. And Abram went to sleep with his ancestors. So when you go to sleep, your spiritual man leaves your physical body and he goes to the physical 
plane, to the spiritual plane. That is why some of you, you dream that you are eating in the dream. You dream that somebody is feeding you. You dream that you are having sensual relationships in the dream. You have these dreams where your body has been corrupted. You are, some of you don't drink, don't smoke. But in the spiritual realm, when you have dreams, you are smoking and you are drinking and you get up in the morning and you don't understand. I, I'm not a drink, I'm not a smoker, but I'm dreaming and my spirit man is smoking and drinking and participating in debauchery and all these different things because your spirit has left to somewhere. And some of you, you are shocked when you have such dreams and you don't comprehend, but I'm a Christian. I have given my life to Christ. Why is it that I keep, I, I'm being tormented by these dreams of immorality, of addiction? Because you need to understand that your spirit, spirit needs to be fed. And the only food that your spirit can eat to sustain itself in holiness and in righteousness is the bread of life, which is Jesus. Your spirit man needs to eat of the flesh of Jesus and needs to drink of his blood. All right. So that you can have life in you. So that the life that is in Jesus can then be in you. There is no other way. That is why we have Holy Communion. All right. Because we are believing that at that point when we are taking Holy Communion, our spirit is actually drinking the blood of Jesus and eating his flesh. Literally. And when you begin to understand that it is important that you know how to have communion with God. How to be one with God. Satan cannot manipulate you in his spirit. He cannot come and hijack your body. He cannot come and feed you in a dream. Witches will not be able to manipulate your spirit. You are not going to be led somewhere in the spirit to be used and abused by Satan and the agents of darkness. Let me tell you something. Witches and wizards and warlocks, when they are, for instance, in the spiritual realm and they don't want to be tired, they don't want to walk miles, they will use you as a vehicle. They will use you to eat, to drink, to do whatever. They will use you and abuse you. That is why it's important that you need to understand that unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. You, can, you are more or less dead and you can be controlled and manipulated by Satan. All right. So these are all things that you need to consider as a child of the living God. You need to have fellowship with God. You need to drink of eat of his flesh because his flesh is real food and his blood is real drink. Your spirit man can eat, cannot eat bread and, and 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 cannot eat meat and all these different things. Only only can be fed one way. It is the blood of the lamb and his flesh. And that's it. There is no other way you can feed your spiritual man. But this way that the Lord Jesus has taught us. All right. Because the Bible tells us even in the Old Testament. That, 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 um, that the life of a man is in the blood. Right. If you begin to lose blood. You know, God forbid an accident happens and a person is losing blood. They're losing their life every minute. That's why they need to be rushed to hospital for blood transfusion, for the bleeding to stop. Because life is, is in your blood. That's why we shouldn't eat food that contains blood. We should know the source of every meat that we consume. All right? As believers in Christ. So I want to say this to you. In order for you to have life in you, for you to your spirit to be alive, for your spirit not to be manipulated by Satan. You need to understand the concept of the blood of Jesus and his flesh. He's the bread of life. So incorporate in your prayers when you are praying. Say it. Let the spiritual realm hear you and let the physical realm hear you as well. And you say, as I am approaching your throne, Lord Jesus, I eat of your flesh and I drink of your blood to have life in me. Father Lord, I'm here to be fed. Come on now, somebody. 
And some of us need to understand that we need to take Holy Communion. Um, we do it here every Saturday, right? And sometimes you come and do the Holy Communion and you might not understand why we do the Holy Communion. But I have explained to you why. Because we need to renew our blood covenant with Jesus. Come on now. If you go to any altar that is satanic, on a witchcraft altar, that altar needs blood constantly, right? And you, are you not the temple of the living God? Are you are not an altar for God? So then you need the blood of Jesus. You need his flesh. You need a sacrifice. So how will you be in that position if you don't plead the blood? If you don't eat of the blood? And if you don't eat of the flesh? You cannot. And that's why some of you suffer from very terrible nightmares. Everyone can manipulate you in a spirit. Every, everyone can take your spirit and, and give remote control your spirit. Because why? You don't understand the importance of eating of the flesh of the Son of Man and drinking of His blood so that you can have life in you. But today you know better. And today you're going to begin to pray and you're going to begin to actively say it when you pray that you are eating the flesh of the living God and you are drinking of his blood to have life and watch how your life will change. You will begin to have different dreams. You will notice that you cannot be controlled by witches and wizards and warlocks anymore. You will notice that you will begin to have the victory over sin because sometimes the reason why you cannot have the victory over sin is because your flesh is still dictating your spirit and what your spirit should be doing. And then you see yourself in cycles of backsli backsliding constantly and going back to your vomit because your spirit man is not fed what is supposed to be fed with. Your spirit man is not. Your spirit man is struggling, is malnourished, is, diff, is dead, has no life in it. So therefore, if your spirit man has no life, how will you fight that, this battle of sin? How will you fight temptation? How will you fight the, the attacks of the enemy against you? Come on now. Life is spiritual. And before your body gets sick, your spirit man has been attacked in that particular organ. That is why you get up in the morning and you cannot breathe. You are coughing and this and that. You don't understand that the battle was waged in the spirit. And because your spirit man has not eaten the blood, has not eaten the flesh of the son of man and has not drunk the blood of the son of man, then you are attacked. You are now limping. You have arthritis. You have this and you have that and you have that. And you don't understand why are you always constantly sick, weak and can't go about your business. Because your spirit man is weak. Your spirit man is, is, is malnourished. All right. And this is it. Let us go to Hebrews 9.22. Hebrews 9.22, we are going to go through different dimensions of the blood of Jesus and the mystery of the blood of Jesus. And we're going to learn how to plead this blood over our lives. Hebrews 9.22 reads, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Come on now. So the law of Moses required a blood sacrifice for what? For the forgiveness of sins. All right. That is the law of Moses. All right. That is why you need to understand that without the blood of Jesus, there is no forgiveness of sins. When you are asking God to forgive you, you have to plead the blood. You have to ask the blood to cleanse you, to purify you, to sanctify you from all unrighteousness. That is the only way you can attain from God forgiveness because he does not recognize any other blood but the blood of your son, of his son Jesus. Just like in the Old Testament, they had altars and the Levites had to sacrifice uh, the blood of any calves and, and animals to atone for the Israelites and God received that blood sacrifice of those animals to forgive the sins of the Israelites today God does only understands also one language he wants to see the blood of Jesus over you 
so that you can be forgiven. It's not by your many, many words. Yes, you confess your sins unto God, but you plead the blood. You begin to bring scripture. You say Hebrews 9, 22. The blood of Jesus has been shed on a cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. The blood of Jesus is the one that is cleaning me. And without his blood, I know I cannot be forgiven. So I come here to plead the blood of Jesus. And you begin to pray this prayer like that. Because without the shedding of the blood of the Son of Man, sins cannot be forgiven. It doesn't matter how you try to develop a certain amnesia. Like, ah, I did it long time ago. And, you know, I've repented already. No, if you have not, if you have not pled the blood of Jesus, that sin is not forgiven. The reason why some Christians are not seeing breakthroughs in life. They cannot have the victory over sin. They cannot overcome temptation. They cannot see God moving in their lives to bless them. Is because why? They have not pled the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. So there is still sin speaking against you before God because you have not pled the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of all your sins. All right, saints. So be in a habit of always pleading the blood. You are asking God to forgive you. You have to plead the blood. It's not good that you're just asking God to forgive you of your sins. Plead the blood of Jesus because without the blood of Jesus, sins cannot be forgiven to anyone. We are just here deceiving ourselves and wasting our time. Let us go to Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So the blood of Jesus does what? Justify us. That means that we can appear before God blameless. We can appear before God blameless romans 5 9 since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from god's wrath through him god's wrath is coming saints the wrath of god is upon the land of the living saints and the only way you can escape that wrath of god is by being justified by the blood of his son jesus all right, saints, you want to escape what is about to come. You want to escape the damnation that is that is upon the land of the living, the plagues, the pestilences. You want to escape the, the, the natural disasters. You want to escape the wrath of God. Uh, you have to, 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 to be justified by the blood of Jesus. If you are not justified by the blood of Jesus, you cannot escape the wrath of God. You will not escape. Simple as that. You will not escape. In fact, when God is about to unleash his wrath, he will look for where the blood of his son is and he will not afflict you. And this is how merciful God is. Because some of you here are Christians. You believe in Christ Jesus. Because some of you here, you believe in God and and you care about God and you plead the blood, even your neighbors are benefiting from that protection from God. Because you have the blood in you and you plead the blood over your neighborhood. You plead the blood over your neighbors, over, over the community. And God will honor that and God will pass. Just like in the days of, of the Passover. When the spirit of death the angel of death was collecting the souls of the firstborns of the Egyptians. He could not collect the firstborns of the Israelites because the blood of the lamb that was sprinkled upon their doorstops. And today there is a better lamb than those, uh, you, the, those animals that were uh, uh, used to, as atonement. But basically God was just prophesying that more powerful blood would come from his son to atone for us. So when you are pleading the blood of Jesus... The angel of death that is collecting souls at night will not come to your house. 
will not come near your dwelling. We will even pass over your neighbors because you, you said I saturate my environment and my neighborhood with the blood of Jesus. Even your neighbors that were supposed to be under, be, 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 be a target by the angel of death or the angel of misfortune will not be a target because you, the righteous of the Lord, you pled the blood. So we are justified by the blood and God has to honor the blood of his son. Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Romans 5, 9. Sorry, saints, I'm repeating myself. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. For you know that is what, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. So God's redemption from mankind was not possible because of material things or valuable things like silver or gold. We are redeemed only by the blood of Jesus and that's it. The incorruptible, precious blood of Jesus, the lamb without blemish or defect. There are some people that think that they can buy the forgiveness of God. They can bypass the blood because of money, because of influence in the church, because of position, because of being friends with the pastor, because of being an usher, a deacon, or somebody that has a position of leadership in the church. There is no redemption possible without the blood. You cannot offer anything in exchange. Cannot buy God's forgiveness. You have to be under the blood of Jesus. You have to be subjected to the blood. You have to show and display that the blood of Jesus is upon you. Or else. Forgiveness cannot take place. Some of us think that our actions and our due diligence, our work that we do for God will justify us. You are just deceiving yourself. It's the blood of Jesus that will justify you and that's it. There is nothing else. You being in the choir is not going to justify you. You serving Christ diligently every Sunday morning is not going to justify. God is looking for the blood of his son. Without, that is a lamb without blemish or defect. In order to redeem you. Nothing else. But we are living at a time that we think that our many labors for God the many things that we do for God, that is what is going to justify. Oh, at least I'm serving God. And at least I'm trying my best to do it. No. Are you under the blood? Does the blood of Jesus fully justify you? Are you cleansed by the blood of his son? That is all he's looking for. Yes. Obviously, we do work for God. With We, we, we give ourselves to God wholeheartedly with all every fiber of our being. But we must not forsake the fact that we need to be under the power of his blood. The blood of the Lamb. Let us go to Revelations 5, 9. Revelation. Revelation 5, 9. Revelation 5, 9. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you are slain and with your blood you purchase for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. God purchased you. You are purchased by God. All right. You are purchased by the Lord Jesus. So when you think that you can do what you want to do with your life is a lie. You are God's property because his son had to die to pay for your sins, to pay for your penalties and the penalties of your ancestors. So therefore you are God's property. 
So how you spend your day, it's God's business. How you clothe yourself, it's God's business. How you spend your money, it's God's business. Who you marry, it's God's business. Where you work, what you do with your life, your decisions and everything, it, it, it's God's business because you are his property. If someone comes and takes your car from the drive and by force and drives your car and everything, you're going to, you, 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 you're going to report it to the authorities, won't you? And say, look, some, my car theft, somebody came and took my vehicle. Going to file a report, right? And the police will be looking for the criminals that took your vehicle, right? And if they, if they find them, they will be taken to court for what they did to pay for the crime. Some of you that you are saying, oh, God understands me. He loves me. So it's nothing wrong if I drink. There is nothing wrong if I, if I smoke a little, if I go out with my friends to the club. It's, I'm not doing it every day like I used to in the day back when I was in the world full time. It's only now and again that I'm doing, oh, I can go and have a glass of champagne, of wine or whatever it is. Oh, I, I, you know, if I invite my boyfriend to spend the night today or my girlfriend is okay. You are God's property. You are purchased on the cross of Calvary. God is going to judge you for damaging his property. God is going to damage you. God is going to deal with you for damaging his property. He's going to hold you accountable. At least I purchase you. You're mine. You're my property. And look at your body, your vital organs, they're all corrupted. The lungs don't work properly. Do you know that there is going to be, I believe when we get to heaven, God is going to have a careful inspection of each one of our vital organs. Why are your lungs uh, burnt? Oh, I was smoking. Why is your liver like this? I was drinking. Why, why this and why you, why this and why that and why that? God is going to ask you, you're going to be judged because the temple, although this is a, a, a body that you have that is a flesh that will be buried, all right, but it's still the temple of the Most High God. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you are a servant of the Most High God and you are walking and going about your business, when the spiritual realm sees you, when God sees you, God sees you as a walking altar. All right, that is how God sees you. So if he looks at his altar and his altar has ash, cigarette ashes, has alcohol, his altar has, has sensual immorality and, and all these different things. God is gonna, God is gonna deal with you because you corrupted his altar. Imagine going to church to smash the pulpit, pour drink on a pulpit like that other pastor did the other day. There is a pastor that was using all sorts of things to trash the pulpit and put honey and syrup over the pulpit and, and do all sorts of uh, abominations to the pulpit. That is what we do to our, our bodies. We trash it. And then when we get sick, we blame God. Why have you abandoned me? When you were out there using and abusing the temple of God, you didn't care about <laughs> your situation you didn't care but now that is pay time now that is the time for you to pay for what you did you don't want to pay the, the, the price we all gonna have to pay the price somehow we are all gonna have to pay the price simple as that you're gonna have to pay the price because jesus was purchasing us on the cross of Calvary. There was a business transaction that was going on when Jesus was dying on the cross. A business transaction was taking place. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, Jesus is a businessman. He was purchasing souls for his father in heaven. He was busy redeeming people. He was busy purchasing you. You had a price and Jesus paid it didn't bargain. It didn't say, oh, this one, I'm, this one, I'm only going to pay 50K. No, he paid with his own life. So do you understand how serious this is? 
how serious it is, even how you clothe yourself. Because no one, no one wants to see the church dirty and no one wants to see the church without flowers. No one wants to see the church. Well, the, the people want to go to church and they want to see a clean church. They want to see flowers. They want to see a nice environment, clean environment. They don't want to see a dirty church. But you yourself, you're going to have to give an account. All STDs that are, that are out there, you have them. Because you decided to just to corrupt the temple of the living God. There is no addiction that you don't participate in. No, no vice that you don't have. Be very careful. Especially if you are claiming to be a Christian. Big mistake. Because you've already made a covenant with God. It's different than those who are in the world sinning. Because they don't know the truth that sets them free. But you that you receive the truth. But you put the truth on a shelf, stuck somewhere, which is your Bible. And you decided to go and live your best life. Oh, just because I'm a Christian, it doesn't mean that I shouldn't drink. I have to stop going to clubs. Just because I'm a Christian, it doesn't mean that I have to pride, deprive myself from this and that. Don't worry, God is coming for you. He's coming for what belongs to him, for what he purchased on the cross is going to come because you one day decided to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No one forced you. You are not coerced. You are not forced to do so, but you did it. So that means you enter into a covenant with God. You allow the blood of Jesus at that moment to atone for you. And now you have backslidden and you have gone back to the kingdom of darkness. Shame on you. Shame on you. Let us go to Revelation 1 from verse 5 to 6. Revelation 1 from verse 5 to 6. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and have made us kings and priests Unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I hope you do re understand the responsibility, the great responsibility that you have before God. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, you were automatically made a king or a queen and a priest or a priestess. Unto God. All right. When you, listen, a king is a ruler, a queen is a ruler, all right? That means that God gave you rulership over your environment, over your family, over your workplace, if you work, or business, if you have a business, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Know that when he was busy redeeming us on the cross of Calvary, it was just not the, 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 the cleansing of our sins, right? And the remission of our sins. It was also to make us kings and priests unto God, his father. Some of you don't understand. You are a queen. You are a king. You have been given by God authority, rulership, kingship. As simple as you look at yourself in that your neighborhood, when Satan passes through your neighborhood, he knows that that is a house of a king and a, or a queen. In that home lives a priest or a priestess unto God. So some of you need to understand the dimension of what the blood of Jesus has accomplished on the cross when shed for us. Forgave our sins, yes, atoned for us, cleansed us and, 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 and everything, but listen, if you are a child of God, God is what? Is he not a king? You cannot be a child of God and be a, not being a king or a priestess because God only has kings and, and queens and, and priests to serve him. God doesn't have any, any person. Did he not buy you? Did he not redeem you? So you are the daughter of a king. And what is a daughter of a king? You are the daughter of a high priest, so you are a priestess. So every time you are praying, 
and you are in your prayer closet, you are alone with God. God sees you as a priest as in, a, in, in your full duties. God sees you as a priest in your full duties of servicing what? Your altar unto God. So you better start to understanding that the weight of responsibility that is on your shoulders is not something easy. You are you yourself, you have been given the mantle to be a king, a queen, or a priest, or a priestess, but you are smoking, you are drinking, you are fornicating, you are lying, you are gossiping, you are hating, you are jealous, you are holding malice, all these different things. You are bringing shame to whom has redeemed you. You are bringing shame to God. That is not why God set you free. That is not why God cleanses us with his blood. For us to go about our dirty business. To go and take the honor and the glory of God. And trash it through the mud. Be very careful. Some of you have been abusing your priesthood and your kingship for a long time. And God is warning you today. That yes, I gave you kingship. I gave you priesthood. But it comes with responsibility. It comes with some, some duties, some things that you need to, to do. First John 1 7 9. First John 1 7 to 9. First John chapter 1 from verse 7 to 9. First John 1 7 to 9. But if we walk in the light, he is in the light. If we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purify us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Not only you have fellowship with Christ, but because Christ has died on the cross of Calvary, you actually have fellowship with all the persons, all the souls that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So you are in fellowship with Jesus and with your brothers and sisters which is the body of Christ. You are in fellowship. That is why when you go somewhere and you meet a fellow Christian, you have to sit down with them and you have to talk to because you have fellowship. You are linked by blood. You see how we used to say, oh, huh, my family relatives and everything. Forget about your family relatives. You're not talking about you, the ones that you are linked by no natural blood. When you see your brothers and sisters, if you meet one, if you bump into one, you have bumped the blood of Jesus links you both, unites you both, whether you like that brother or sister or not. The same blood that runs through their veins is the same blood that runs through your veins because you don't have your blood anymore. Neither the blood of your ancestors running through your veins. You have the blood of Jesus now. Come on now, somebody. Have you ever heard of that saying, blood is thicker than water? Well, don't we all have the blood of Jesus in us? We've been redeemed and washed and cleansed and sanctified and purified by the blood of Jesus. So all the brothers and sisters that all have been redeemed, sanctified and purified, you are linked to them by blood. They are your family members. All right. And yes, according to Tim, it is true. The blood of Jesus is much more powerful than your natural blood. It speaks louder. And he speaks of deliverance and he speaks of eternal life. So therefore, it's more important that your little blood that you have with your family relatives that don't like you anyway. Some of them. But some of you, you treat your family better and you give them special treatment more than you give to your brothers and sisters in Christ. I pity you. I pity you. My family. Hey, my family. What about your family in Christ? Are those nobodies to you? 
and the, unless you are going to spend eternity here in the land of the living and you're going to live forever, then that is a different conversation. Those that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb are your family members. All right? You are not going to, to, to spend eternity with your wicked family that does not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Some of them don't want Jesus, hate Jesus. You are going to spend eternity with your family in Christ, with your brothers and sisters that Jesus, Jesus was busy adopting children on the cross of Calvary, redeeming people and making a family for himself and his father. And you are a part of it. So stop glorifying your own family and you don't treat your family in Christ well. You call your entire tribe and speak and talk to each one of them, greet them, greet them. But you can't pick up the phone and greet your sister in Christ and your brother in Christ. You cannot even spare two, three minutes to, to share some words of encouragement and prayer. You are too busy with your... I feel sorry for you because you are not understanding the assignment. You don't understand what the blood of Jesus has accomplished on the, on the cross. Why do you come to the live stream to begin with? We are here playing games. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You know why the blood of Jesus was, available, was made available on the cross of Calvary? You want to know? Jesus shed his blood and he said that his blood would constantly speak for us. Because he knows that for as long as we are in this condition of being in the flesh, we will always sin. We sin every day. And that is why we need the blood of Jesus every day, every hour, every minute. Some of us will have an evil thought. Hey, blood of Jesus, I rebuke it. Blood of Jesus, forgive me. Blood of Jesus, sanctify me and purify. Oh, I want to go and do this to so and so, but blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, please cover me and forgive me, Father, because of the blood of Jesus. That is, that is the, the fundamental principle of the blood of Jesus. It's always available when we fall short, when we sin, because God knows. We are in this flesh, we are in this body, we are prone to sin. That, listen, let me just clarify something here that is very important. The only difference between Christians or believers in Christ and non-believers, the only difference that exists is that we don't get up in the morning to go and sin. We don't say, hey, I'm going up today. I'm going to the club. I'm going to buy an outfit to go to the club. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that today. Hey, I'm going to turn up. No, we don't do that. We get up with the desire to serve God. We get up with the desire to obey God. But in the course of us going about the Father's business, because of our sinful nature, and because we are still in this flesh, we sin. It's different. You went to work and you even prayed for everyone. You covered everyone with the blood of Jesus. You prayed for a good day and you get to work. A co-worker annoys you, gets you on the nerves and you say something to that co-worker and exchange words in anger. It's different than somebody that goes there for action. You see today that my, my co-worker, I'm going to deal with her. It's different. All right. You are not deliberately looking to sin. You, it happened. You see? You are not leaving work and say, hey, what bar is closer to my home so I can go and drink two to three beers and go home? No, you're not doing that. When you leave work, you go home. And if somebody invites you, say, hey, I'm a believer in Christ now. I don't engage in that lifestyle. That used to be in the past. I used to do all those wicked things. But now I don't do those wickedness anymore. I'm not in that kind of life. Hey, they count me out. I'm not involved in it. But some people are looking for opportunities to sin. In fact, they draft a map how they're going to sin on Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday morning they go to church. In fact, they tell their friends, hey, I will go out with you clubbing. But remember, Sunday I have to play for the church band. So, hey, I'm going to have to leave the club a bit earlier because I'm the one that is going to be playing the, 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 the drums today at, 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 at church. 
There are people like that. I used to be like that. I used to say, I'm going to the club, but hey, when a certain time comes, I'm going home because Sunday is church. And I was thinking that I was a good Christian. Because why? Ignorance. Not being taught. The, the pastor is not teaching me that I'm in sin. He's telling me that for as long as you come and you are in church, that's it. And I th was thinking, hey, for as long as at least I, I turn up to church, that's fine. Living in sin. I'm not going to stay here and lie. How do I know? Is it not because I was doing it? But I'm here to tell you the truth. The truth that no one told me, I'm here to tell you. That it is a sin and you are, you are going to be liable to the divine court of justice of, of, of Almighty God. You will not escape. You will simply not escape. You're going to have to give an answer. This is not a joke. All right. God knows that we are in this flesh. He made provision for us, the blood of Jesus, or at the mention of the blood of Jesus. And by means of our confession of our sin, immediately our sin is forgiven. Lord, I didn't mean to slander, but I slandered today and I'm, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me. I promise you next time I will discipline myself a little bit better. I'm not going to be slandering no one. Forgive me, God. And remember the blood of your son, Jesus. Somebody called you. Hey, see, and your own sister and cry. Hey, sister, Dalila, guess what? Guess what? And I said, yes, yes, what it is. And I entertained some gossip. I better go and ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. I entertain some gossip with sister so and so. And and and, and if you, you are, are led by the spirit, you will call sister so and so and say, Hey, sister so and so, yesterday God spoke to me. I felt conviction of the Holy Spirit that we are moving in gossip. We are moving in slander. And God is not pleased. Let us repent. And then you will pray with that sister on the phone. And the sister will also get the touch of the Holy Spirit. Are you not both sisters in Christ? And you will not do it again. It, it, it will be a moment that the Holy Spirit was teaching you something. And graduating you to be better. And to do better. That is why the blood of Jesus is available. It's for circumstances like that. So that you will not lose hope. And say, hey, I've messed up. That's it. God will reject me forever. It's a lie. He knows us. He knows we are wretched people. We are no good. And he knows this, these ones need the blood constantly because they are always messing up. They are always doing things that don't make no sense. And God allows us time to correct ourselves. He's so patient and loving. He will allow us time to correct ourselves. That is the God that we all serve. But some people think that they don't have any sins. Have you noticed that some people, the Holy Spirit will, will um, speak to them concerning a sin and they will deny it. The pastor is correcting somebody and they don't want to take liability because why? They, they, they think that because they've accepted Christ, they don't need to repent. They are, they, they are, they are, they are without sin now because they've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. So they don't have to worry. No correction at all. Pastor cannot tell you that, look, that dress is too short for church. You're offended. I'm not coming here because of my dress. I'm coming here to worship God. You don't have any so sense of correction. You don't respect authority. When God sends authorities for you to respect that authority, whether it's a teacher. No, starting with your parents. Your parents are your authority. No matter how angry you are at your parents, your parents hold the keys of David. They can lock your life. Do you know that? If a parent sits down because you disrespected them and they pronounce that until so-and-so comes and apologize, no door will open, everything will be locked. God will come in agreement with mom and dad. Simple as that. Whether you want it or not, whether you are upset or you can be upset until thy kingdom come, God will side with your parent because you disrespected and dishonor your parent and God will not change his word to suit you. Simple as that. 
some some of you here it's not witches and wizards and warlocks that are locking and padlocking your life your disrespect to authority is padlocking your life when you were young, you disrespect your teachers. You talk back at them. Come on now. You have no sense of authority. Disrespect your parents. You disrespect your boss. You disrespect everywhere you go, those in authority, you have no respect for them. Some of you need to go back to that school, that primary school that you schooled and go and look if your teacher is still there and ask her for forgiveness. And or ask him for forgiveness. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Some of you as a teenager, you disrespected your parents. You called them names. You disobeyed them. And today, life is not working out for you. Finances are locked. Marital life is locked. Can't have children. Because why? God used your dis the, the devil used your disobedience against you. He took your file and went before God. Look at this disobedient. Even if your parents did not lock you or say something. Even if your parents have just forgiven parents and Christian parents. Even. But Satan took your case to the throne of God and said, look at this one. Today insulted the teacher and then went home. The mother asked why and he insulted the mother. And then he didn't stop that there. Dad came home and insulted the dad and slammed the door on dad's face when dad was correcting him or her. This one will never prosper. And God says, Amen. God will not be mocked. God is not going to join you in your foolishness, in your sin. Mm -mm. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. The devil will take your file, this one at work. The boss told her that, look, this is not how you do this. And is the and she snatched the paper in, 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 in disrespect. And then God says, oh, well, then do as you see fit. God will say it. Because why? What, what will God do? Get involved in your mess? Get involved in your mess? There is a lot of repentance we need to do, saints. A lot of repenting we need to do. Things we did as children. Some of us disrespecting grandparents were telling us to keep quiet, sit down, do your homework. And we were whispering things. The devil was listening to all of that foolishness. Don't disrespect your government. That brings a curse as well. All right. Even if the government is doing things wrong, all right, you are to pray for good, godly leadership, but you don't disrespect the government because every king, every ruler that is in a position of leadership has been placed there by God. There are curses that come because of rebellion to the government. Yes, the only way we Children of God will disobey the government is when they say, oh, take the mark of the beast or do something that goes against our God, that goes against the Bible. Then, yes, we have permission by God to say no, not to disrespect, but to say, no, I'm not I'm not going <coughs> to comply. <coughs> Simple as that. But for you to now go online and do caricature of your leader or prime minister or king and mock them say names insult them look at all those rappers in the 90s that used to say f the police where are they today if they are not in jail or if they are not washed up no money no nothing they are dead but they were singing f the police one were, weren't they singing f the police but when you in your house with your little gangster al rap album that you listen, when they home invade you, are you not going to call the, the police to come? You see what I'm saying? We need to be very careful. Not agreeing with someone that is in a position of leadership does not mean you can insult them. You do not insult them. 
All right. You don't agree with your mother. You don't agree with your dad. That is normal. Are they not human beings like you? But that doesn't mean that you're going to call them names. All right. You can't say, mom and dad, I do not agree with what you are saying and wh what you are doing. But with all respect, mom and dad, I'm not going to comply with what you are asking me because it goes against the Bible. It goes against the word of God. And you know now I'm a believer in Christ, period. You don't have to call them names. You don't have to be derogatory to them. You don't have to be disrespectful. You don't. Must we all agree with one another? No. You don't have to agree. Listen, when I come here to preach the gospel, I'm not coming here with my opinion. Because my opinion, saints, is very con 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 controversial. The way I think is very controversial. And I, sometimes I have to filter myself because I'm a person that, you know, I'm, the, thing, the way I think is sometimes even God has to correct me because it's too much. But I, I, I know how to put myself in the back seat and allow the whole Holy Spirit to lead. Because I'm not here for my opinion. My opinion is not going to lead you to God. My opinion is not going to lead you to heaven. I'm here to give you the gospel. And that's it. Everything else is not relevant here. Simple as that. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. And will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We have to have the habit, saints, to confess our sins. Don't allow a week, a day to go by without you confessing your sins to God. You that says you don't respect the government. Well, even Jesus, when he was being judged by Pontius, Pontius Pilate, he didn't disrespect Pontius Pilate, Pilate. He didn't. He wasn't rude to him. He wasn't disrespectful. He just sh said, he spoke the truth. You only have power because my God, my Father in heaven, gave you power. And that's it. He did not insult Pontius Pilate. He did not spit on him. He did not disrespect the Roman government that was um, ruling Israel at the time. Israel was a colony of the Roman Empire. He did not disrespect Caesar. He did not. In fact, he said, Jesus said, render to Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is our example. If we are believers, we are led by Jesus. Jesus is our moral compass. He's our example. All right. Even if they come to say, take the mark of the beast, we are not going to insult them. We're going to say, no, this is treason against our God. And we are going to quote the scripture in the book of Revelation that we are must and take the mark. We are believers. And that's it. Because when you sow dishonor, you will reap dishonor. You say, oh God, grant me unmerited favor. If you don't, if you don't favor your parents, you don't revere them to begin with. Those in authority over you. I love, you know, when I see people mocking. <laughs> when I see people mocking. Men of God and women of God. Insulting them anyhow. I feel sorry. Those people that come here and troll me and save. I did not come here out of my own will. God sent me. Won't God back me up and deal with whatever it is, the abuse that is going on? If parents say cursed words about you, they are judged by God. Because the Bible says that children honor father and mother. But parents do not provoke your children onto wrath. If a parent is cursing his own child, number one, that curse will not land on, the, on that child. Will not, especially if he's a child of God. Because when you become a believer and God knows that your parents have been sp speaking curses over you, God is going to buffer all of that, nullify all of that. God is going to take charge of your life. He becomes, you, you, listen, our father in heaven is our ultimate father, our heavenly father. So if your heavenly father, your earthly father is busy cursing you 
and doing all these different things, God is going to deal with them. God will deal with them. Because you are now property of God. Were you not purchased on the cross of Calvary? Can somebody come and speak about the property of God just like that? Did we not read that we are kings and priests? Can people just carry on cursing a king and a priest and that there will be no, no, no repercussion to that? You don't have to worry. Hebrews 9.14 Hebrews 9.14 14 Hebrews 9 14 and by the way the only commandment in the Bible with a promise of a blessing is to honor father and mother the only commandment in the Bible that is with a promise is to honor father and mother and what is the promise if you honor father and mother you shall live long in the land of the living and you will prosper. You want to live longer in the land of the living. And you want to prosper. Begin by honoring father and mother. Oh, but sister Dalila, my father is a criminal. My mother is a constitute. My parents have no moral and no integrity. Still, they are your parents. That is the vessel that God used to bring you to the world. Honor the vessel. Honor the vessel. Honor the vessel. When you are honoring your pastor, you are honoring your evangelist. You are not honoring the carnal person. You are honoring the, the anointing that God bestowed upon them and the sacrifice to serve God. That's it. Simple as that. And when I say pastor, any pastor, you see a woman of God in the street or you see a man of God, treat them well. If you see your pastor and he's doing the grocery shopping, go there, volunteer to pay for them if you have the means. You see them struggling with the shopping, help them carry it. There is a blessing in honoring parents. There is a blessing, a blessing in honoring men of God or women of God. There is blessing. Me, I'm looking for opportunity to be blessed. If I see an elderly person struggling, I will be the number one volunteering to help them because I know that blessing will come out of that. Once that elderly person says, hey, God bless you, my daughter, for helping me. I was struggling. That's it. You will see that that month, all your doors will fly open to you. You won't have to chase, go to 30, 31 days campaign of fasting and pray. No, your door will just open. If you go to your mother's house with some grocery, you do that, do some work for your mother, you call your mother, you do, your door will just open. Even that your finances that is in shame, it will, you will see it. Hey, this month, doors open for me. Simple as that. Oh, but sister Dalila, my dad never looked after me. My dad abandoned me. Honor the vessel. They are sick and in hospital. Go, get some food, visit them. Volunteer to help them with their medication. Volunteer to help with whatever it is. It is your parent that is in hospital, regardless of what transpired in the past. Some of us Christians wouldn't be chasing uh, open doors, divine connection, and this is if you would just obey the commandments of God. It is simple. Blessings will just land on your on your lap, and you say, "Hey." I'm telling you, if you are a person that you're always calling your mom, Mama, how are you today? How are you feeling? What about your knees? Mm, what have you rubbed on that knee? Are you okay, Mama? Papa, are you all right? And you are calling them. You call them in the morning. You call them in the evening. You inquire from them. You spend time. Oh, they're complaining about their arthritis. They're complaining. You say, oh, I spoke to a friend of mine and she recommended this. Don't worry, I'm going to buy the supplements and I'm going to give you the supplements and this and that. You are there buying groceries for your parents. You are buying all the things, toiletries. Do you think that God is going to allow you to ever suffer? Unless we are reading another Bible and we are not reading this Bible. You will never suffer, no matter how many enemies you have. They will fall and perish. They won't, they won't be able to do anything to you. You are blessed. 
Because every time your mother goes to bed, hey, my daughter that is trying for me, she's really trying. My my son that is trying for me, hey, my son tried. Hey, my son tried. Oh, he tried, he tried, he tried. Oh, God bless him for me. Oh, this is my son, my please, Jesus. Oh, Father, protect my son. Have mercy, God. Jesus, this is my son. Well, please don't let anything happen to my son because he's the only one helping us. I have six kids, but only Johnny comes to visit us and, and buys us ice cream and everything. Hey, only Johnny's taking us to the appointments and he's even skipping days of work, taking holiday leave to bring us to the hospital. Oh, Jesus. Do you think that you would... Is there any, any pagan book that can come and tell you slap you left and center and it will happen it will never happen it will never happen some of us when we go back home and we go to our village we look for all those old people we begin to ask oh is my mama mama so and so alive oh mama mama so and so is alive we'll go buy a little you know our mamas back home like our rappers we call it rappers. We take it. You call it dashikis, but we call it rappers. We take it. Hey, my man, I remember when I used to come here when I was a child and you gave me mangoes and it used to be so kind. So I've decided to remember you today. And she will bless you. That is not your grandmother, but you grew up with them. Is your, is, is your elders in your village. Who do you think can trouble your life? Is it who? Witches to do what? Witches can never, can never touch the righteous of God that is busy doing good. When Satan takes your file to 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 to, 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 to God and says, "Hey, hey, sister, son, son," God says, "Come, get out." Hmm? Don't you see my servant? Consider, look, champion number one in honoring parents, champion number one at work honoring the boss, champion number one in helping the church. Champing number, do you think that Satan, if Satan can't do anything, what he, what will he do? The reason why some of you fear Satan is because you obey him every day, you, you're obedient to him. That's why you are too afraid of him. Can't sleep, you have a dream. Hey, you know, that day you will not sleep because you are afraid of him. He can come and intimidate you because why? You are his companion. Let us go to Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 9, 14 reads, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Saints, this passage of the Bible is very important for some of us that we did some wicked things before coming to Christ. And sometimes when we sit down and consider the wickedness that we did, the sins, the perversion, the immorality, the disobedience, and the years of abuse of, of substances and whatever it is, we began to feel like, God, how can I even serve you when I did all these wicked things, when I committed all these atrocities against you and you, your conscience begin to be heavy on you and you begin to feel like, oh God, I can't even pray because I'm remembering that day when I committed fornication and that day when I prostitute myself and that day when I lied and I stole and I did this and I did that and you begin to feel like you cannot follow God you you are Satan is using your own conscience against you to tell you look you are not worthy of serving Christ oh put that Bible away who are you to testify look at how filthy your life was in the past look of see all these different things we have Hebrews 9 14 how much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God cleanse our consciences. Your conscience has to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus or else you are not going to be able to fully render your service and obedience to God. You will always feel like you are still in sin. You are still filthy. Yes, self-condemnation. Very much so. The devil will begin to bring memories, flashback of your sinful past and begin to speak over your life. Hey, you cannot serve God. Look at you. How can you serve God today? But that is why we need the blood to cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Yes, Sister Janet, he is the accuser of the brethren. And that is why we need the blood of Jesus to atone for us even in our conscience. We need the blood of Jesus to cleanse our conscience. Our conscience needs to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. 
another function, another dimension of the cleansing power of Jesus. It cleanses our consciences, but we need to bring our consciences to God to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Don't allow Satan to bring back your past. When Satan brings back your past, remind him of his future. Remind him of the cross, what happened on the cross and remind the devil of his future. He's going to burn in eternal damnation in hell in the lake of fire. Simple as that. Okay? So you don't have to worry. God has given you a second chance and he's not going to hold you down and to, to your past and what you did in your past. God is not going to do that. God is not going to do that. Your past is your past. It belongs in the past. Has no, no, no place in, the, in your presence, present and certainly no place in your future period. There is no argument against that. So every day when you are experiencing some sort of accusation from Satan. Allow the blood to cleanse your consciousness in Jesus name. And you will begin to feel better and stronger. Let us go to Matthew 26, 28. Book of Matthew 26, 28 saints. Matthew 26, 28. And it reads, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Again, the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can forgive our sins. Our sins can only be forgiven with the blood of Jesus. Some religions think that some, some sects of, of Christianity think that their sins will be forgiven for the amount of work and charity they do for God. But I'm sorry, that is a lie. Only the blood of the covenant that was poured out for many for the forgiveness of our sins can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Nothing else. Oh, but Sister Dalila volunteer for the food program. Sister Dalila volunteer for everything that has to do with God. That is not going to cleanse your sin, beloved. The only, the only thing that will forgive you is the blood of Jesus. Nothing else. If they are telling you that, well, for God to forgive you, you need to do this and do that and do that. Salvation is not by works. It was by grace. Because there is nothing that me and you can offer for the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. There is nothing that we can offer for that blood shed on the cross of Calvary. It has no price. All right, saints. So it's an insult when you try to begin to try to justify yourself. Try to show good works to show that you are justified by, you, by your good works. That offends God. If there is something that offends God, is that attitude. I've, I've heard some Christians saying, well, I know I'll go to heaven because at least I try to be good. I try to, to treat everybody fairly. I always do charity. I always support my church. No mention of the blood of Jesus. You think God... The Bible says the righteousness of man is as filthy rags to God. We are all wretched sinners. Even the good that we do, God looks at it and frowns and, and, and looks at it. God only it entertains me on, or you when the blood of his son is mentioned. That is the only time God has even time to even consider you or look at you. So, so what you are volunteer for the food program? Who told you that God needs your, your volunteering? Who told you? Who told you that God needs your volunteering? Oh, but Sister Dalila, I'm sponsoring. I'm sponsoring the food program. Who told you God needs you sponsor his food program? Who told you that God needs your money? Who told you that God needs your input, your time, or whatever it is that you think that is so good that you are bragging that you're doing this and that for God? Who told you that God needs it? Who told you that? Some of us are thinking too much of ourselves. Too much. We are thinking too much of ourselves. We think that we are all of that and a bag of chips. We need to, to relax. Take several seats. God doesn't need anything that we do. 
It doesn't need your time. It doesn't need your 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 money. It doesn't need anything that you you think that is of value that you can give to him. It doesn't need any of it. Simple as that. All right. Simple as that. The forgiveness of sins is by the blood of Jesus. It's not by works. It's not by silver or gold. We have already read that in the scripture. Let us go to Ephesians 1, 7, saints. Ephesians 1, 7. And keep liking, saints, and sharing as the Holy Spirit leads you. Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7 reads, In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Come on now. God's grace manifested on that cross. All right, by, by, by forgiveness, because of the blood of his son Jesus shed on that cross. When Jesus began to shed his blood on that cross, the grace of God was activated. And the riches of God's grace were activated on that cross immediately. And you are now the recipient of the God's grace. We were not under God's grace. We were under God's wrath and punishment. But once the blood of his son Jesus began to shed on that cross, we tapped under that grace of God. Ain't that something, saints? That is amazing, isn't it? And we all need that grace. And for you to receive the grace of God, the blood needs to speak over your life. The blood of Jesus needs to be speaking over your life, speaking over your existence. The blood of Jesus needs to be over you as a mark of redemption. If you don't have the mark of redemption, which is the blood of Jesus, then you cannot have grace. You cannot receive from God grace. I'm sorry. It's what the Bible says. It's what the Bible says. We only have redemption in Christ Jesus because he shed his blood for us. And we only have the forgiveness of our sins because of the blood. And we only can operate under the grace of God because of the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. So the blood is connected to forgiveness of sins, is connected to uh, God's grace. You can't receive God's grace without being under the blood. It's as simple as that. There aren't any shortcuts some of us, we like to take shortcuts. We don't want to go all the way. If we can make it shorter, we will make it shorter. With the things of God, there isn't something like shortcuts. You're going to have to take that long way to get to God. The Bible doesn't speak about being christened. All right? Sister Lioness. The Bible tells us about one baptism and there was the baptism of Jesus. All right? By John the Baptist. That is the baptism that it that the Bible commands us to do it. All right? Revelations 12:11. Revelations 12:11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I'm going to repeat again the scripture. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb. Triumphed over who, number one? This is the depiction of the triumph of the saints against the Antichrist, Satan. We are going to triumph over the Antichrist. The beast by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. That is why we come and preach the gospel. All right. 
You have to come and I have to come and come here as a witness. Because this is how we overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. We don't, we believers, we don't care about this mortal condition of ours, this life, this mortal life. We are more concerned about an eternal destination. That is it. And whatever it is that we are facing here in the land of the living, whether persecution, whether attacks from Satan, evil accusations, whatever it is, all right, we triumph over all those demonic and satanic systems of the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The blood of the Lamb will allow you to triumph over any difficulty. You are having problems. Speak the blood of Jesus over that problem. You are having um, problems with your marriage. Plead the blood of Jesus. You are having problems at work. Plead the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus will allow you to triumph anything and everything that is of the devil. Because listen, if anything is happening to you that does not reflect the glory of God, does not come from God, it comes from Satan and his kingdom. Sister Joy, children cannot take Holy Communion. Holy Communion for, if it's for people or adults that can understand the implication of the Holy Communion and the and the, 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 you know, sometimes even us adults, we, we struggle to understand the, the, the depth of the Holy Communion. What more a child? A child cannot take Holy Communion unless they do have understanding. Because some children are very mature. Baptism is the same. A 14-year-old could be, could be more mature than a 21-year-old, depending on how the Holy Spirit is dealing with that child. If you are ready for the baptism and you understand the baptism, you can go and be baptized. I don't care if you're 14, 15. If God is telling you to be baptized, should I be baptized as a man? Did you understand as a child that you you are the, 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 the covenant of the baptism? Because So if you don't, you need to baptize again as an adult. Revelations 12, 11 cents. I'm going to go back to that. I'm asking you to please send the questions to my inbox because I didn't get distracted. Okay. If you are having any difficulties in life, you are struggling with sin. You are struggling with sense of self-condemnation. You are struggling. You're having problems, adversities, trials. Know that the blood of Jesus gives you the power to triumph over all those adversities in the mighty name of Jesus. All right? The blood of Jesus will give you the power to triumph. That is how powerful the blood of Jesus is. All right? The blood of Jesus is powerful enough to give you the power to triumph over any circumstance, any situation, any adversity. If any problems that you are facing, speak the blood. You are finding a certain season in your life difficult. Speak the blood of the Son of, of God. And God will give you the power to triumph over it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ephesians 2.13 Ephesians 2.13 Ephesians 2.13 but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2.13 But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We are so far away from the Lord's saints. Far away in our sin, in our iniquities, in our mess. And the only thing that brought us close to God was the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the bond, is what bonds us to God. The blood of Jesus is what bonds us to God. Okay? 
because our sinful nature keeps us away from the Lord. But the blood of Jesus keeps you near to the presence of the living God. So if any of you are feeling today, for instance, that you are far away from God, that you are not praying as you used to, you don't feel as close to God as you used to back in the days, you need to understand that the blood of Jesus brings you closer to God. The blood of Jesus is a, is, is a bond. All right. We were far away from God. We were not the recipients of the grace of God. And the blood of Jesus just brought us back to the bosom of Almighty God. All right, saints. And to end. Last scripture. Hebrews 10, 19. And this scripture is the, the conclusion of the entire live stream today. Hebrews 10, 19. Hebrews 10, 19. Excuse me, saints. A call to persevere in faith. A call to persevere in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Sorry, saints. Hebrews 10. We're going to have to go forward. Let us continue to go read forward here yeah, because I was supposed to have put the scripture much longer. So Hebrews 10 from verse 19, let us go to 25 because. Okay. A call to persevere in faith. Hebrews 10 from verse 19 to 25. For some reason, the scripture was cut short. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unservingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another and toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and in all the more as you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. So this is a call to persevere in faith. So you know that in the Holy of Holies, right? There was a curtain. All right. That separated the Holy of Holies from the outer court of the tent of, of the Holy of Holies, right? There was a veil there and the, the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus symbolized that curtain. That's why when Jesus died in the Holy of Holies, the curtain was torn open or some translations call it veil. All right. So the, the body of Jesus represented the veil. All right. So when he died, immediately we had our access to God was reinstated. All right. And he became the high priest. So before we had all the Levites, all right, as high priests. Now Jesus has taken that position of being the main intercessor between us and God. So there is no need for priests and Levites anymore to be offering sacrifices of atonement. 
Jesus himself is the sacrifice. His body represented the veil on the Holy of Holies that was torn into two pieces. And he then assumed the position of being the high priest. All right. Presiding over what? The matters of intercession. The matters of intercession between us and God are with Jesus. No Levites can now come and claim nothing. There is nothing like that. Jesus does it for us. He's our advocate. He's our mediator. And before the blood had to, the, the blood in the Holy of Holies, the blood offered for the atonement of the Israelites was sprinkled on the altar, right? But now the, look at what the Bible says. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and the full assurance that brings, that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from our guilty conscience. You see? So that blood that was sprinkled on the altar is sprinkled on our hearts now to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. The blood of Jesus now is sprinkled directly in our hearts. Because our hearts are what? Our hearts are the altar. Because back in the Old Testament, the animal for atonement would be killed. And then the blood had to be sprinkled on the altar, right? But now is the blood of Jesus is sprinkled directly in our hearts to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. Have you ever, ever heard the term scapegoat? So in the Old Testament, um, they will have a time where they will atone for the sins of the entire camp of the, the, all the, all the entire Israelites. And they would get a heifer and they will speak all the sins of the heifer of Israel over the heifer, right? And they will release the heifer to go somewhere far to represent that now we're not guilty. We transferred all our guilt, all our sin to the heifer and the heifer has gone. You see how this is all prophetic and is linked to the Old Testament? So Jesus became the scapegoat for us as well. That's why we, we, we can now have, we can now be cleansed from any guilty conscience. And having our bodies washed with pure water. Let me give you another mystery. Do you remember during the crucifixion that Jesus was pierced on the side by a spear, right? And what came out was water gushed out from his side. So our bodies are washed with that pure water. That's why when I say bring the water for consecration, bring the anointing oil. That is one of the symbols of water as well. That water that gushed from the side of Jesus Christ of Nazareth has the power to cleanse what? Our bodies. All right. So I hope I have in my little capacity by the help of the Holy Spirit explained to you that the death of Jesus Christ was exactly how a lamb was sacrificed in the Old Testament. Exactly the same ritual. But this time around, it is spiritual. It is supernatural. His blood was sprinkled all over our hearts. Because our hearts are now the, 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 the altar for sacrifice. So every day you are calling upon the blood of Jesus. Your heart is being sprinkled by the blood of Jesus. And also uh, you are being um, redeemed from any guilty conscience. You are being cleansed. So those of you that are feeling guilty, although you've left your left your past life of sin whatever whatever but yet you can't find peace you are still um, crucifying yourself over your past you need to i hope you are taking notes you can read read it you know and meditate and the bible goes for forward about saying that we should always fellowship some of you that thinking that ah, I don't have to go to the live stream or go as and when. No, you need the live stream. I need the live stream as well. 
because we are to encourage one another in the Lord because the day is fast approaching and we need one another and we need the power of God and we need to be encouraged by one another. We need to be serving God together. This thing that you can do your own thing in your own house and I'm here doing my own thing is a lie. Come, fellowship. We meet here and we fellowship. Sometimes Sister Dalila is laughing, is cracking jokes and you are having fun at home. Sometimes you, you crack your own jokes and I'm here as well. But we are still encouraging ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. So precious saints, let us pray. All right, we're going to ask the blood of Jesus today to cleanse us. That is what we are going to be doing today. That is the assignment in prayer. And saints, thank you very much for tapping the screen. For, um, we have reached 101.9K. God bless you, saints. You will receive your reward in Jesus' name. Abba, Father, King of glory, everlasting God, we thank you, Father Lord, for your presence today. We thank you, Father Lord, for teaching us about the power that is in the blood of your son, Jesus. Father Lord, how many of us in ignorance, not knowing the truth, Father Lord, in living in self-condemnation, in guilt, not understanding that the, the blood of Jesus is the provision that was made available for us to continue to walk in righteousness without being afraid, knowing that, that the blood of Jesus will always cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we do confess our sins to you. So, Father Lord, we are here once more to confess all our sins to you, Father Lord. Everything that we have done in the past, everything that we might be doing now, and Father Lord, we pray for forgiveness, even for things that we have not yet done. We pray for the atonement power that is in the blood of Jesus to fully manifest today, Father Lord, as we pray and as we seek your presence. And we pray for the blood of Jesus to wash us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, saturate us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, atone for our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, restore our virtues in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, fight for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, protect us and our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, break yokes in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, deliver us from bad dreams in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, redeem us from all our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, have mercy and forgive our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, bring peace and joy in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, deliver us from curses and bewitchments in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father Lord, we apply the blood of Jesus over our dream lives. Let the blood of Jesus guide and protect us. Let every stubborn problem in our lives be defeated by the blood of the Lamb. We command the angels of God to hide us from all our adversaries in the mighty name of Jesus. In our sleep, the precious blood of Jesus will protect us. And in our going out and coming, we shall be divinely protected in the mighty name of Jesus. Every road accident or tragedy that the enemy is planning for us shall backfire in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no sorrow in heaven. By fire, we will not mourn any person in our family in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, will fear no evil for the Lord is with us in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah cleanse us father Lord from all unrighteousness right now father Lord as we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives father Lord we plead the blood of Jesus also over father Lord our uh, our families Lord God in the mighty name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus father Lord of our children we plead the blood of Jesus father Lord of our parents and spouses father Lord we plead the blood of Jesus over our children father Lord in the mighty name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus father Lord of our spouses in the mighty name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus over all that we are and all that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over and upon our extended families in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over any sick person in, the, in our families in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our surnames in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our place of birth in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus flow into our foundation, deliver 
deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, speak deep deliverance into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, nullify the concluded works of ancestral demons of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, disgrace all our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Witchcraft operations in our foundation, blood of Jesus, clear them away in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil curse using our blood to magnetize our virtues be destroyed by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, settle our case tonight. Settle our case today. Settle our case in the mighty name of Jesus. Every strange spirit troubling our blood, thereby causing hypertension or high blood pressure, die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every problem we have acquired as a result of idol worshiping blood of Jesus, push them out completely in the mighty name of Jesus. As from today, we are free from inherited foundational battles in the mighty name of Jesus we obtain our victory in Jesus name we hold the blood of Jesus against dark powers from our father's house in the mighty name of Jesus blood of Jesus kill every snake dog lion and etc appearing in our dreams to harm us in the mighty name of Jesus we hold the blood of Jesus against time wasters and household powers in the mighty name of Jesus by the power that is in the blood of Jesus we break every blockage to our breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus we separate ourselves from every evil foundation harassing our progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you that the blood of Jesus has the power to overcome our present situations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we apply the blood of Jesus upon our heads, hands, legs to saturate our bodies and destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus against Satan. We resist you in the mighty name of Jesus. Flee away from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, defend your interest in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus upon our doorposts. We apply the blood of Jesus in our homes. We hold the blood of Jesus against every spirit of darkness troubling our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus, let every stranger militating against our progress be arrested. In the mighty name of Jesus, we apply the blood of Jesus to separate us from the sin of our ancestors. In the mighty name of Jesus, blood of Jesus, we lose our success, healing, prosperity, victory, documentation, court cases. In the mighty name of Jesus, we apply the blood of Jesus upon our bodies. Let the blood of Jesus redeem us from the power of sin. Hallelujah. Let the blood of Jesus speak peace into our wombs. Oh, we soak our wombs with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus uproot whatever our Father has not planted in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus break every blood covenant of unfruitfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus protect us and our unborn children in the mighty name of Jesus. We remove every moving object in our womb by the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire sanitize our conception with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus speak against the the, the the thought, Father Lord, of um, miscarriage, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon, Father Lord, those who are delivering, Lord God, and about to be delivering a child, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over, Father Lord, husbands and wives, in the mighty name of Jesus. We are pleading the blood of Jesus upon our body systems. We drink the blood of Jesus. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon our bodies or any hospital bed where our family members could be in in the mighty name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus to every stubborn infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over infirmities, diseases, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, every evil deposit out from our blood system. We plead the blood of Jesus for our total healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of the Lamb, heal us. By your stripes we are healed. Father, let every sickness in our lives bow to the blood of Jesus. Whatever sickness, disease has destroyed our lives, blood of Jesus, repair it in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus to remove whatever our Father has not planted in our bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against stranger arrows in our bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus to settle our case today. Blood of Jesus, kill every infirmity. Our blood is transfused with the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, paralyze the activities of strange 
bondage, sickness in our bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, speak good health into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus, let the power of God flow into our finances. We apply the blood of Jesus over our bank accounts. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our financial income. We plead the blood of Jesus to activate our hands for prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, kill the spirit of poverty and hardship in our lives. Our finances are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over our saving plans. We plead the blood of Jesus over our, over our tithes and seeds and offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our properties. We plead the blood of Jesus over our hands. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the souls of our business and, in, and its environments in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our names. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our foundation. We plead the blood of Jesus upon the world of our hands. We soak our lives with the blood of Jesus. We paralyze all satanic oppressors delegated against us with the blood of Jesus. Let every blood flowing at, the, at any evil altar be silenced by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We stand against every domestic power challenging God's grace in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus cancel every witchcraft plan against us in the mighty name of Jesus. We soak our food much with the blood of Jesus. We soak all our washed clothes in, Father Lord, with the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, let every covenant with the spirit of poverty and loss be broken and destroyed forever in the mighty name of Jesus. All bloodline curses be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Every blood of an animal affecting our destiny is dry up by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We hold the blood of Jesus against tortoise and snail anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus destroy all yokes of evil family patterns in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every door that we have opened to the enemy be forever closed with the blood of Jesus. Let the power that is in the blood of Jesus release us from satanic troubles in the mighty name of Jesus. Demons, you cannot enter into our house. We draw a circle of the blood of Jesus around us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus nullify premature and still birth breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus against any evil padlock in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus, Father Lord, upon our children, their education, Father Lord, all areas of our life that are not manifest in your glory, Lord God. And we thank you, Father Lord, for the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. We thank you for your prosperity. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for your love, Almighty God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. We thank you because you are here, Lord God, to heal and to restore, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person on this live stream, you are having serious problems with your husband. Arguments and, and so bad that you are not talking to your husband at the moment. You are not talking. Your husband goes about his business, you go about your business and you don't speak in the house. And it's beginning to affect the children because they have noticed that there is something serious. Mrs. J., in the mighty name of Jesus, receive the restoration and reconciliation of your marriage in the blood, in the name of Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus over your marriage and you, Sister Janet, I speak the blood of Jesus over your marriage. No one and nothing will separate you from the love of God in the mighty name of Jesus. No one can curse whom God has blessed. Sister Tiffany, receive it as well. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Re marriage restoration. Your husband will return a different man. The, the, immediately the blood of Jesus will begin to bring unity. The blood of Jesus will begin to bring peace into your home, into your family. I speak the blood over your marriage. I speak the blood of Jesus over your marriage. I speak the blood of Jesus over your marriage. Don't do it, mamzi. Allow the blood of Jesus to restore your marriage. Allow the blood of Jesus to soak your marriage in the blood of Jesus. I soak your marriage in the blood of Jesus. I soak your marriage in the precious blood of Jesus. I saturate your marriage with the blood of Jesus. I place your marriage in a pool of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak the blood, I speak the blood over that marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is a, a, a parent here. You are extremely concerned over your son that has not yet found work. Your son 
has not found work and is is you have to support this son and he has not find yet work and you feel that is something supernatural because sister Angie Newman received the deliverance for your son next time your son applies for a job the curse over him is broken and he will be able to be successful during that interview and secure that job that curse of joblessness it's broken and is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus, this time around, when they applied for the job, that is the job. They will receive it and they will secure it in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to come back and testify of what the Lord has done for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Everlasting God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. There is a person here. You are having problems with your in-laws. Your mother-in-law and your father-in-law are always constantly in your business. They come and stay in your house and your husband doesn't even consult you. He just brings them and they come, do what they want and you have no saying on the matter and you are feeling depressed over this situation and you are even even considering separation or divorce right capital me you that are being um terrorized by in-laws that are always in your business controlling your husband dictating coming to your home doing what they want with the house and giving you your orders as if you are not even the wife. I want you to write capital me. God wants to deliver you today here. Don't be ashamed. Write capital me, sister Shelley, receive your deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over your home. I plead the blood of Jesus over your marriage. I saturate your home in the blood of Jesus. No more manipulation. No more manipulation in the mighty name of jesus no more manipulation from in-laws in the mighty name of jesus the manipulation of the in-laws ends and dies today whatever evil spirit that is using them and father lord i pray that you will bind these evil spirits with the everlasting chains of the holy ghost fire and cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever never to have power control and dominion and authority over this couple and over this marriage ever again in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Someone here on this live stream, you are about to receive the deposit to put on a brand new house. You've asked God for a deposit to put on an apartment. You didn't ask a house. You say, God, all I need is a roof over my head. I just need an apartment or what we call a flat. You said to God, Lord, I need a deposit and I already know what apartment I want, what condo I want. I just need the deposit, Lord. And I, I don't want to own, own any deposit. I want to be able to raise this money and be able to put the deposit. Um, God, child, Ali, receive the victory. God is going to open the door. And you, Sister Angie Newman, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every prayer that you pray, God hears you so much so that I could hear your prayer resonate as God was showing me your prayer. Receive it and come back and testify that the Lord made the deposit available to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Receive a brand new home. It shall be well. And it shall be well with you, sister, in your new house. Receive, receive your victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here you would like to accept today? Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You have never had this opportunity before. But today, you want to surrender your life to Christ you want to accept Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. All you need to do is type capital me. Type capital me to accept today Jesus as Lord and Savior. Type capital me. That is it. Don't leave this live stream without Jesus because if you die today, you will open your eyes in hell. Sister Orla and welcome my sister. 
and to the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Heaven rejoices, Sister Orla, because you are prodigal daughter of the Most High God. You have returned to your Father in heaven and you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. This is the best decision you have ever made in your entire life. Your life will never be the same again. Angels in heaven, my sister Orla, are celebrating, are having a party in heaven because of your decision. This simply means that the day that you close your eyes in the land of the living, you will open your eyes in paradise, in the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now that you have made this decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot go back to a life of sin. You cannot go back to your vomit. You need to remain on the straight and narrow path. This simply means that you cannot commit adultery, fornication. You cannot lie. You cannot cheat. You cannot deceive. You cannot covet. You cannot raise false testimony. You cannot unalive anyone or hate. You cannot involve yourself in the occult. Occultic practices such like yoga, uh, Reiki, trans meditation, tarot readings, the zodiac, astrology, um, crystal balls, um, necromancy, seances, consulting the dead concerning your life. You cannot do this. You cannot um, have any Ouija boards. You cannot. Um, um, you cannot. Um, have any substance abuse such as cigarettes, alcohol and illegal substances all these different things do not belong in the body of Christ and you cannot participate in any of these acts um, you cannot participate in any immoral lifestyle such as for instance anti-clockwise lifestyle or same-sex relationships. These are against God and against His commandments. And um, you're going to have to now become a student of the Word of God. You're going to need a Bible. If you don't have one and you are an English-speaking person, I would recommend the King James Bible. But if you speak any other language than English, you can buy the Bible in your own language and still God will honor you. Become a student of the word of God because the word of God says, um, that's it, sister, well done. The word of God says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth of God is the Bible, is the word of God, the Rima word of God. Um, you have to develop a lifestyle of prayer as well, fasting, seeking the face of the Lord. Um, you need to be baptized in the water as well. If you are not, begin to pray, asking God what congregation he wants you to be a part of so that you can be baptized and continue to grow in the Lord. Alternatively, alternatively if you have not yet found a place and you would like to join us, we are more than happy Congratulations to you, Sister Orla. You are more than happy to join us, Sister Orla. We gather here from Mondays to Fridays from 1 to 3.30 p.m. United Kingdom, which in the United States is 8 a.m. in the morning. But please do Google your time zone so that wherever you are in the world, you will never miss us here on this congregation. Uh, I would like to also invite you to be a part of our YouTube family simply because this app will no longer be available in the Americas from the month of September has been banned. In case of that happened, at least you, will, you would be subscribed to our YouTube page and you will still be able to participate of the live streams. For you to have access to our YouTube page, all you need to do is go to my bio and once you get to my bio, just below the picture, you will see there the YouTube icon. All you need to do is to press the YouTube icon and instantly you, you, you will be led to YouTube and then you can subscribe. All right. And um, 
that will also give you access to previous ministrations. I want to also welcome those that are here for the first time. Our welcome. You can write capital me if you want us to personally uh, greet you. And uh, please do accept our warm virtual hug and embrace. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are happy to see you today, to have you here. And we hope to see you again. Um, I would like to also give a scammer's alert, especially if Pastor Godi. Pastor, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Bodumeli, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to give a scammer's alert, especially for those that are here for the first time. Unfortunately, there are many fake accounts being created daily um, where they are using my name and image and the content here on this page to create fake accounts with the objective of asking you for um, donations to a certain orphanage in Nigeria. I do not reside in Nigeria. I'm in the UK, England. So those accounts are fake. I'm asking you to please report and block each one of them. Don't cooperate with whatever it is that they are demanding from you. I will never ask you for money or send you a message to ask you for money. Sister, it shall be well. Go to my bio and below the picture you will see there the YouTube icon. As long as you click on the icon, you will be straight on our YouTube page. All right? And it's the same name as here, the Lila Dush Santush 48. Hallelujah. Um, so this is it, saints. Um, I would like to also say, if you would like to donate to this ministry, if God is leading you to donate, to help me to continue in ministry, you can do so by going to my bio and there you will see the YouTube, the PayPal information. And God, in his infinite mercy, will bless you abundantly, will reward you. He knows your address. He knows where you live and he shall grant you the victory in all that you need and want in Jesus' mighty name. So precious saints, um, don't forget that the anointing of our homes ends today. And those of you that were not able to anoint your homes, nevertheless, you are reminded today, you can begin today. Why not? Um, don't forget the Holy Communion will be held Saturday on YouTube. So um, the service on Saturday is on YouTube and not here on TikTok, okay? Um, same time, saints, same time. All right, let me pray for all of you, saints. Abba, Father, King of glory, everlasting God, I thank you for the brothers and sisters in attendance here today, Lord God. I thank you for their lives. And Father, Lord, I thank you for such a wonderful ministration today, Lord God, concerning the power of the blood of your son, Jesus. Therefore, Father, I want to plead the, the blood of your son Jesus over each one of us present on this live stream. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their destinies, over their children, their marriages, over their jobs, over their finances, over everything that belongs to them. Father Lord, and I'm asking you continue to be a wall of fire and a protection around thy servants and deliver them from all evil, Father Lord. I pray that, Father Lord, as they leave this live stream, Father Lord, doors will begin to open. Father Lord, they will begin to fulfill purpose. Father Lord, resurrect all that is dead in their lives, Father Lord, and open doors that no man can shut. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Abba Father, King of glory, everlasting God, remember the faithful tithers and givers of this ministry, almighty God, according to your purpose and will for your children, but moreover, according to what you promised them, in Malachi 3.10, Deuteronomy 28, and also according to all the blessings of Abraham. And Father, Lord, touch, not in your wrath, but in your mercy, Lord God. Beloved Sister Lori Nobles Gray, family members Anthony, Caden, Jason, Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Bryson, SJ, Geraldine Collins, husband Alfonso, Roberta Davis, Martha Sam, Jacqueline Bogle, 
Colby, Brittany Kimi, Selena Bradley, Janet Alec Belehi, Antoinette Fleming, Chantel Small, Tawana Watson, Felicia Toe, Meredith O'Brien, Serenzo Simon, Jules Sample, Tyron Harris, Anisu Gale, Michelle Johnson, Karen Lewis, Rakita Wola, Parents Raymond and Renova, Kaylee Keisha, Kelvin Kaylee Cameron, Leighton Britt, Sister Lorian Baker and her entire household, Dolores Edwards Harding, Kiana Lane, Janelle Grant, Sheila Ray, Linda St. Lega, Titi Toure, Dota Abiba Tu and parents, Latosho Quentabam, Simone Morgan, Michelle Wallace, husband Wade, Antoinette Lewis, Natasha Fogel, um, children Jordan and Junior, Mother Mini Benjamin, R Products, China Greenlee, Tamisha Brown, Tarmisha Hayes, Diamond Serenity, Walter Jr. and Shimori Chanel, the Christian Women Fellowship, Sister Sherelle, Denise Henry, Elizabeth Tadis, Daughter Sarah Oguto, Catherine Nyawira, Kelvin Kalix, Shade Simmons, Brenda Togo and her family, Antoinette Fleming, Bella and Tina, Jalisha Simmons, Jalisha Hall, Selena Bradley, Shanette and Noel Jenkins, Angelette Newman, Alice Jones, Denise Marshall, Venice Apton, Natosha Samuel, KC, Shane Furtado, Kasai Neilani, Kalaya Williams, Anisha Brown, Chance Taylor, Toya Thorpe, Andrew Mayfield, Michelle Wendy Gray, Nakia Wright, Sister Gladys Cobol, Salmon Lures, Tanya Barush, Augustina Shiedo, Jalen Morton, Lashona Williamson, Kechi Kamara, Carly Wade, Carlin Theus, Denise Marshall, Lilana Nelson, Angela Maria Stoda, Chigoziri Ahamzi, Beautiful Bella Boutique, Sharonda Freeman, Erin Jones, Elijah and Brenda, Janelle Grant, Andrew Apostolo, Junior, Julie, Julian Yoba, Liam and Anthony, Daniel Durham, Yvonne and Bok Imelda. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today, Lord God, manifest your power, your authority and the power of the blood of your son Yeshua over the faithful and tithers and givers of this ministry. Father Lord, they have a covenant with you, Lord God through their tidings and offerings and gifts, Lord God. So therefore, do it for them as you promised in Malachi 3.10. And because of them, for their sake, Lord God, rebuke the devourer, the canker worm, and the grasshoppers, Father Lord. Father Lord, rebu rebuke, Father Lord, the, the, the grasshoppers in their finances, in their bank accounts, Lord God. Father Lord, in their pockets, in their sources of income, Lord God. Father Lord, when it comes to their jobs, businesses, ministries, property, vehicles, Lord God. And Father Lord, open the floodgates of your heavenlies, Lord God. And Father Lord, open and, and, and shower upon thy servants such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, restore the years that the canker worm and the grasshopper has eaten, Father Lord, due to the ignorance, Lord God, and inability to comply with your will, Father Lord, for them. Almighty God, King of glory, everlasting life, I speak the blood of your Son, Jesus, over their finances, Lord God, over their bank accounts, Lord God, over their bills. Father Lord, and I'm asking you today, Lord God, manifest, Father Lord, your power in their lives because I'm speaking over each one of them. All the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. When the enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways from the face of thy servants, because that is, Father Lord, the inheritance in you, O Lord. They are like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither. They will never dry. They shall yield its good fruit in season and out of season. They are like the cedar in Lebanon unmovable and unshakable and everything that they touch with their hands shall always be fruitful and multiply father lord i'm asking you today lord god that the door that you will open for them today lord god no man can shut and every door that satan opened to afflict them lord god let it be closed with the blood of jesus and closed forever never to open in the mighty name of jesus father god in the mighty name of jesus I'm asking you today, arise from your holy throne of grace and power and might. Arise in all your authority. Arise in all your power. Arise in your, all your majesty, Father Lord. And Father, I'm asking you today, 
Clothe each one of them with a garment of praise. Grant them, Father Lord, unmerited favor, open doors, divine connections, elevation, promotion, success in all that they do. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, Lord God, as so they sojourn the land of the living, do it as you did with Father Abraham. Continue to enlarge their coast and their territory. Bless those who bless them and curse those who curse them, Lord God. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, let a mantle of excellence be upon your servants, Lord God. Father, Lord, grant them unmerited favor, Father, Lord. Open doors, Lord God, for them, Lord God. And Father, Lord, as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach, rebellion in their homes, divorce, the plague, the infirmity, Father, Lord, shame and disgrace, be far away from each one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I speak over your servants that their heavenlies will never be bronze to them and the ground in which they stand shall never be iron to them. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, Lord God, cleanse the stars with the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Father, Lord, so that no one will be able to deem their shine in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Precious saints, it shall forever be well with you, both in the land of the living and in the afterlife. Always remember, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. And God willing, I shall see you all uh, tomorrow. And once again, thank you so much for praying for me, for supporting me, for always coming and doing your very best, not only for God, but also to make sure that this ministry grows. And I speak that you will not miss your reward. And those of you that need an open door, I speak from the corridors of power over your lives in the mighty name of Jesus, that every door that you need to be open, just walk through it. Because it has already opened in the spirit. In Jesus mighty name. I love you all. And have a wonderful day. Shalom. And God willing I shall see you all tomorrow.